Hey, here's your heads up to this longer podcast of the Personal Development Unplugged type. I'll tell you what it's about in a minute, but Personal Development Unplugged podcast is about deconstructing the complicated. There are so many people in this world who make things overcomplicated. They do it for all sorts of reasons, you know, whether it's ego or to big themselves up or just pretend they've invented stuff. And what I do is I break down those complicated processes, I won't call it processes, just complicated things, into simple, easy processes. But just because they're simple, just because they're easy, they're only that way when you commit. You need to put the work in. There's no point in just listening to this podcast and then going, well, I know it, but I haven't done it because knowledge without action is not worth a thing. So whatever you do, when you listen to this, then do something. Just do one little thing. Let a little nugget, a gold nugget, is in there somewhere for you. We'll do it. Anyway, this podcast is all about the horrors of the world, the things that we get bombarded with, and how to do something about it, and how to change the world when you're doing something about it. Because you can. And it starts through the window. Through the window. It's like a little child story. Looking through the window, children. Now, look through the window. You'll understand it when you get it. So follow me in this deep dive, okay? I'll speak to you real soon, just after this. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hi guys, Paul, Paul Clough, Personal Development Unplugged, the podcast just for you. And today, I wanted to speak to you about something that really got me. You may not know, but I do webinars and coaching for my son, who has a mind mastery group for personal development. And twice a month, I will do a webinar or question and answers. And one of the questions really got me thinking, and it was from someone who wanted to know how they could deal with all the horrible things that happen to this world and, uh, and not feeling so bad about it, you know. And I thought, well, that's a pretty simple question, really. But then I got to think about it. I know when I look at the telly, the TV, listen to the news, I don't read newspapers. I've done such a good job at the moment. I'll talk about that in a moment. But when you see all these different bloody medias because you've got it on online now you know you get these things flash up you know you look at one thing and then you get loads of others and there are some pretty terrible things happening around the world they're happening in countries so far away from us but they're also happening maybe in your country my country maybe in your state maybe really closer to home and as i said i well, I've weaned myself off watching the news uh, on on the TV and reading newspapers as best as I can, really. I still see f- bits of it. I still get caught when I'm driving, listening to the radio, and the news comes on. And I want to listen to something, but then, oh, my God, it's repeated and repeated. And fake news is there. That even makes it worse. People don't tell the truth, which doesn't make it worse. Think of all the politics that's going on everything it can be so negative and it's negative what sells but it doesn't do us any good does it and it is so easy for me to say well the answer is don't get involved don't watch it don't listen to it don't read it don't see it but you can't can you because it's there everywhere these people put it out they don't look at it even on on a good footing they don't try to look what can we learn from this because some of the atrocities in the world, we should have fucking well learned a long time ago what's happening and how to deal with it. And we're still pussyfooting around. You can see, even thinking about it now gets me slightly, well, gets me emotional about it. And these things sneak up on you. They really do. And then there's, there's the adverts for charities. You're watching, watching TV or listening to something and you see these poor people, poor animals. And the thing is, they never show a happy ending. I don't know why. The PR says, show a bad ending. It's, it's, a, it's a sandwich in reverse. Show the good stuff, that, but hit you with that emotional bit right at the end. 
to get you to give money to charity. And the thing is, if we take all that on board and, and to say about the charities, I understand why they do that because they are such well-meaning people who are trying to do something for the world. And I'll come back to that in a minute. But if we take all of that and paint it as this is how the world is, this is, well, this is all there is. And that's how it's painted. But that's BS, isn't it? Because if you look for the beauty in this world, it's a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. And if you look for people who are doing wonderful things, there are people who are doing absolutely fantastic things. They're ordinary people. They're no better than you. They're no better than me. Other than they're ordinary people doing extraordinary things. They are tapping into their core resources, their heart, their motivation, their true self, their inner strength, and they're doing some wonderful stuff. And we could do that too, because you're an ordinary person who's capable of doing extraordinary things. You've already done it in the past, but those extraordinary things probably just came so easy to you that you didn't realize they were extraordinary. And the thing is, we can look around this world and we can see the negatives. We could look even harder and probably see the beauty. And I say probably because you'd have to sometimes really look, but you can if you have the right intention. You'll see this place is a wonderful place. And if that's the case, we can make it better. But here's the thing what gets me. And this is the thing I've, I've weaned myself off as well. And I've talked to you about it before and I'm going to talk to you about it now. The reason we feel so bad about all these things happening. Yeah, we're bombarded with it all. We're bombarded because of our empathy. People bombard us with all this stuff because we're empathetic. And we feel the feelings of those people going through those terrible things. And that's where I think empathy is a barrel of, well, you know what it is. For me, anyway. Because if you have to feel the feelings to understand what people are going through, I don't get it. I don't get it. And there was a, a wonderful lady, Virginia Satir. She was a family therapist and she's a therapist. Well, she's such a great therapist. She was modeled by the co-creators of NLP because she was doing wonderful work. Her language patterns, pattern, I'll say that again, her language patterns that she used just got to the real core of the issue. She was able to do wonderful things with people. One issue was she was so empathetic. In fact, she used to say, if I can't feel the pain that my clients are feeling at the same level of the pain they're feeling, I don't believe I can do the work. Ah, I think to myself, do you really need to feel that pain? She believed she did. But the thing is, what I believe is, if you feel that pain too much, it will cause dis-ease in you. But the thing is, there's, there's the other side of, of this, and that's compassion. Compassion, to me anyway, and I'm sure I'll get it wrong in, in what it really is, but for me it is understanding that that person is in pain. And if I was to have that pain, it would be horrible, just as they describe. But I don't feel it myself. I understand it, and I get compassionate to help them. And just knowing that I can help them, seems to work. In fact, as a side story, I used to have someone who would work with me in my clinic in Cambridge. Lovely girl, lovely girl, but she was so empathetic. She got into all sorts of problems because we had a diary, we had times for sessions, but she would get so involved with people, she would lose track of time. And she would then back people up, which didn't help the person behind her. And she would come away from the end of every session looking washed out. And at the end of a day or half a day of working, she would be absolutely drained of her energy. And I'm going, what happened? She said, oh, this person, she's, oh, it was so bad. And she felt this and I can feel it for her. And why? Because you're not helping now. You're not helping with that, that level of energy. You need to have that positive energy that you can help, not that you can, that you can just empathize. And she said, well, you know, I'm going to go home in a minute. And I'm going to take this mental shower to clean myself down. And then I'm going to practice having this, uh, this like a shell around me to protect me from this. I said, really? Just be compassionate. And we did some work together. And you know what? It changed the way she worked. 
changed the results that she had, changed her demeanor, changed her energy. And the thing, the more energy she had, the more she was able to help, the more she helped, the more confidence she got, the more confidence she got, she got more energy she got. Yeah, it's a lovely circle, isn't it? So that's where I'm at at the moment. But here's the thing. It's ever so easy for me to say, just get compassionate. But it's more than that, more than that. And that's why I wanted to have a, a little deeper dive. But before I do that deeper dive, I wanted to repeat a couple of stories I've told you before, and I'm going to tell you again, because to me, they, well, they epitomize this, but oh, what I'm going to be talking about, what I want to share with you, what I want you to come with me in. Remember that old guy, the old guy on the beach. Every morning, he would get up early as the tide was retreating, and there would be hundreds, thousands of starfish on that beach being left behind by the, by the surf as, it, as the tide went in and receded. And he would pick up a starfish and throw it back into the tide so it didn't die. So it was, it was there we are. And then he would bend down and pick up another. And it wasn't easy for him because he's an old guy. And as he would do this every day, there would be this younger lad who would do his, who's doing running, doing his keep fit, running down the beach. And he used to keep passing this old guy. And one day he just stopped and said, you know, man, I don't know what you're doing. I watch you every day. Every day you do the same bloody thing. And he said, you're never, ever, ever going to make a difference. Because every day the starfish get washed up. And this is not the only beach in the world. There will be thousands of beaches on the world, in the world, that will have starfish on. And you just bending down, throwing one back at a time, will not make a difference. Hmm. <laughs> He said, you, you tapped, old man, and began to run off, or begin to run off. And the old man just looked at him, smiled, and nodded, <laughs> with a wise old smile as they do. Bent down and picked up another starfish, threw it back into the surf and said, well, that made a difference to you. And you see, the second story is, and it could be, and I think it is, and it was, maybe, the same old man. When he wasn't picking up starfish, he was out planting Little lemon trees, little lemon tree. I don't know what you call a little lemon tree, apart from a little lemon tree. But you know the little saplings. They're not grown fully grown yet. They're just little saplings. And he would dig a little hole, put some fertilizer in for them or whatever they needed, and then pop that sapling in, pat it down the soil, put a little cardboard tube around them to stop the little rabbits eating them and things like that, and then move on to the next one. And do you know what? I reckon it was the same same lad who was running past because every day this guy would run past and see the old man digging that little hole putting another sapling in another lemon tree and he stopped and said i don't know what you're doing old man because you will never ever see these lemon trees grow into a full tree you'll never be able to sit in the shade of that lemon tree too old man you're wasting your time you'll never get anything from this huh you're tapped and off he ran and the old man just looked at him nodded smiled as he does and just thought to himself well I've sat under the shade of lemon trees planted by people who never saw their shade I had that wonderful experience created by somebody else and I'm going to leave it and carry on leaving it for other people to sit in the shade of these trees and that you see led me to think of a guy who I used to listen to he used to do some wonderful weird I then sort of weird podcast because he was very much into religion but he used to be a bouncer you know a doorman but before that and during that he is and was a superb martial artist so totally into the mental side the physical side and he great to listen to if you can find some of his old podcasts i really do suggest you have a listen to him his name is jeff thompson He's gone under the radar at the moment because I think he's doing other stuff. He's writing for plays and films and things like that. So he's gone from, from being a sweeper up in a factory to now writing plays and films. Awesome. So that's what you can do. And that's what he talks about. But he was getting so, so angry, so angry at the world of, the, of the, these terrible things that were happening, especially with the politics, people in high places who weren't, who were supposed to be looking after people, who were supposed to have high values, who were supposed to have good morals, who were obviously doing things they shouldn't do and taking advantage of that position. And he was getting so, so mad about it. He says, because I can't do anything about it. 
yeah, I can vote for somebody else, but it's then going to take another time, and I can't do anything about it. I could write to my my politician, my MP, my governor, whatever it is, but that's it. I can write a letter. Will it work? I don't know. I can maybe go on a, a little thing, you know, where you stand outside of the placard. I can do these type of things, but will it really make a difference? And that makes me so frustrated, so cross. I, I'm just so pent up with all of this. And his wife, bless her, was so wise. She said to him, you don't need to look that far. You just need to turn around and look outside your window there. And he said, what are you, what are you talking about? Look outside that window. He said, look outside the window into the street, to the road, to the avenue that we live in. People close by need your help and you can help them. People walking by need your help and you can help them. There are people who email you, Jeff, who need your help and you can help them. You can make a difference. And when, and, it, and then he got it. And he's, and in his podcast, he talks of this. And I've probably got this story completely wrong, but that's the gist of it. That's how I got it. And that's how it went inside me. It, it changed the way he did work because he started to make a difference, a difference to the people close by. And then he began to write and then he began to influence more people. And people would then email him. Then he did a podcast and he helped even more people. He helped me. I wrote to him a couple of times and he wrote back to me. That's why I write back to everyone who emails me personally. He did it to me. He showed me this is the way, the Tao, as it were. You see, it was more about what you can control. You see, there's a, that saying, the only thing you can control is how you react to these things which are out of your control. And if you just put your efforts and every intention you have, every positive intention into the things that you can control, you will make a difference. And it doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world. Just making a difference to the person next door, the person on the street, maybe your local charity, maybe your, but you know, there's clubs, there's things, there's something you can do close by. Maybe not affecting those polit- politicians yet. It will. Maybe not affecting those people in in other lands, but it will. Because you'll become a butterfly. What? What, Cluffy? What are you talking about, a butterfly? One thing you could hardly describe Jeff Thompson as a butterfly, but he is. In my mind, he is Jeff the Butterfly Thompson, as well as everyone else who have made a difference. Because what they did was, and they're not social butterflies flipping to one group and to another group. They were the butterfly that did their change. They flapped their wings the way they could flap their wings. And they may have been on the other side of the world, but they encouraged other people to become butterflies, to come out and spread their wings and do something and flap their wings and made a storm, a storm of change. And as I was thinking about all of this as well, I heard some, well, I was on YouTube. And what I don't normally do is is listen to any music on YouTube. And all of a sudden, this little music clip came up. And it's a really old one. It was about, I think, it was to do with the paraplegic games in London. I think it was 2012. And I can't remember her name now. But the song was, What Will I Do Today to Make Myself Feel Proud? And I listened to that. And I thought to myself, damn, that gives me a good feeling. It's a song that has that sentence which really resonates in me it it really feels good and it joins with these thoughts i was having so this synchronicity this you know coincidence me thinking me writing these things down this someone asking a question for a q a got me to think all of this reminded me of jeff thompson reminded me then while i'm just absently looking at youtube boom this thing comes on and i thought to myself that's what we can do to flap our wings you just ask What will I do today to make myself feel proud? I mean, Google the record, the music. It's awesome. She's such a wonderful singer. I'm going to find the name sometime, but I will. But then you start to think about yourself. What type of things could I do? Well, I've just told you, you can look through the, look out your window. Look at the person, your next door neighbor. Maybe there's an elderly person. Maybe there's a young person who needs some help. Maybe you could do some writing. Maybe you could do a blog. Maybe you could do a podcast. Maybe you could just go to the local charity shop or you find a charity close by or you just help people doing good things. 
Maybe you can use the skills that you have with your hands. I can't because I'm bloody useless at working with my hands and that would be no good to me. I'd, I'd cause more problems. But if you're good, just doing a good deed will make a difference because if we do that, we will then start showing people around, around the world, around our street, around our neighborhood, around our state, a city, a state, a country. We'll encourage people by being the change we want to see in others. We'll be flapping our wings. We'll be encouraging people by showing that example because we're doing it selfless service. That's what it's all about. Doing things for no return. There's no thought of a return. Just doing things to make yourself feel proud. And I've been doing that just lately and it's it's really awesome. Just saying to myself, what will I do this today to make myself feel proud? And then just sit back. Let it happen. Do what I feel intuitively to do. And then at the end of the day, just before I close my eyes, I just sit sit back. I don't know, lay back, close my eyes and just think, well, what did I do to make myself feel proud? And you go through the day and they're not necessarily Mount Everest prouds, but they're all positive. And it starts to become a habit. And what a habit to have. You then get those neural pathways starting to fire together, wire together to make you feel that way. You begin to see things, that reticulating, activating system. You begin to see things that you're able to help with, to do things with. It's awesome. So I wonder, and here's my question to you, you know, if this is something that you want to think about, what could you do in your immediate radius, family, friends, people in your street through the window? What could you do today to make yourself feel proud, to give you that middle name of the butterfly, to flap your wings, to create a storm? to join with all those other butterflies and make a change and then let those terrible things that you're still, they'll still come up and sideline you sometimes. Sideline? Whatever that word is. But they'll sneak up at you. They'll bite you on the bum occasionally. At least you can say, well, I'm doing my best. I'm doing what I can do. I'm reacting the way that's going to make a difference. And I've got the right intention. And in the end, that intention will spread. That's what I believe. So guessing what I'm trying to say after all of that is it's okay not to feel guilty about it because you're using it now to spur yourself on to do, to do good things. So I wonder if you just took a moment or two to reflect on this. Maybe just that pausing and stop, stopping. And notice, if you were to do that, how positive that would be. How the world will start to fill up with even more hope that things will get better and that hope will turn into a certainty. This is so, yeah, I think it is really important. It's not something I normally talk about in like personal development, but it is personal development for, for you and it's personal because you're going to do stuff, make yourself feel good, selfless service. That's personal development. But it's that other thing that together we will make a difference. You and me. I, I normally make a, a note, why is this important to you and why is this important to me? Try to think about these things. And I couldn't think of one for you and one for me. So right in the middle, together, we'll make a difference. Because we will. We're going to plant those lemon trees, metaphorically. Because that was a true story, by the way. And we're going to help those starfish by just helping them every day. Because I, I bet that was a true story too. I bet it was the same old man. And that same old runner. And I get that runner. I bet. I bet that runner became an old man that helped starfish or planted lemon trees or did something similar. He was, the old man was being the change he wanted to see with others. It was selfless service. But he was showing, showing away by setting an example. And I bet, even if it might have been tiring, that was a good tiring a good way to feel tired, a good way to go to bed at night and sleep and then wake up in the morning. And if even even if he didn't sing to himself, what will I do today to make myself feel proud? It was there in his neurology. What a wonderful habit to have, isn't it? It could be, it would be, it will be. I wonder what your unconscious mind thinks of this when it thinks of making you feel proud. I wonder what your unconscious mind 
will come up today with, intuitively, things for you to feel, to do, to think about, to talk about. See, just talking about these things and then action to inspire others, to cajole others. We don't, but most of the time we're just doing it by with that selfless service and be that example we want to see in others. Be the change you want to see in others. We will make a difference. We will. And I thank Jeff Thompson for all those, it must be two or three years ago, I listened to him about looking outside the window. Maybe that inspired me to do this podcast. I don't know. Because they're not always a direct link, I guess. Things just happen. I know I've made a difference just by speaking in the past. Not every episode of this podcast will put a zinger into your heart. It will be just for you. But there'll be something in here for you, I know. A little takeaway, even if it's an unconscious takeaway. Because I want your unconscious mind, when, when you listen to this, to go at a deeper level. Find the resources that I know you have and make a positive difference. Letting go of all the stuff that you don't need. To forget the things you don't need to remember and remember the things that are important to you. That was a little hypnotic stuff, by the way. And I wonder, through all of this, if you, the unconscious mind, will surprise their conscious mind by feeling proud, by feeling happy for no reason. But that no reason is a wonderful reason. I don't know. And I wonder how good that will feel, what energy you'll have, how you'll talk about it. What will the sound of your voice be? What will your memories be? You'll be creating your own reality. None of this woo-woo la-la, I'll say it again, none of this woo-woo la-la stuff. You will be creating your reality because you'll be making a difference. And you'll be making a difference feeling good. Selfless service. Well, there you go. That was me rattling on. I, I do hope that's got you to think. It made that, that little question made me think quite deeply. I made a lot of notes. Maybe want to talk to you and share it with you. And I wonder if you could just muse over this for a little while or whether you will muse over this. Maybe you'll make some notes. Make some notes. Maybe make some commitment to become that butterfly. Not the elusive one. I don't know why there's an elusive butterfly in my mind, but not that elusive butterfly. But the butterfly that creates a storm of change. A wonderful, positive storm of change. I wonder what things you could come up with that would make a difference. Make a wonderful, positive difference in the world. What would that intention be? What would you do it for? Why would it be important? to you what would the effects be if you just did a little bit what was the what would be the the smallest babyest step you could take and make a difference right now i mean i'm not going to say this i mean you could quite easily right now while you listen to this flick over through your phone and share this with somebody you could share it with a couple of people right now oh i hadn't thought about that paul yeah well i do or you could go I'm going to do a review. As soon as this finishes, I'm going to do a review for old Cluffy because he's made me think. We are going to make a difference. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, suggest that, that you do that right now. <laughs> but what I do want for you is to feel proud. Have happiness for no reason. And share the love. Share the love. Let's have a group hug. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Feel good. And enjoy every heartbeat. Remember, please, if you have anything to share with me personally, do email me. It's feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. So all one word, dot com at the end and things like that. But yeah, email me. It comes to me. It doesn't go anywhere else. If you want to go on my list, you have to sign up to the hypnosis tracks. And they're at paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. From there, you get access to all those 40 plus free hypnosis tracks, NLP processes, and also you'll get the odd email telling you what's happening newly in the podcast. I do, and I will be doing like little draws so you can get, you can win one of my uh, premium, I'm calling them premium because you pay for them, uh, hypnosis tracks. Last time I did it with my Supreme Inner Confidence program and free your life of anxiety. And in fact, do you know what I did? To all the winners, I gave both, both programs, 
didn't say I was going to do that. I said, I'll only give you one, but I gave both. So that, that's what I wanted to do, and I'll be doing that. So maybe you want to just sign up to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. You'll get, a, you'll get an email back. You just have to then link through. And your email won't go anywhere, by the way, other than in my little list and to get you an email back. I hope to do a few more emails. You won't get inundated. There's no more than one every month. And probably at the moment, it's one every two or three months. It's all confidential. It's all yours. And it's all stays where it is. So you can be assured of that. But I say, share with me and share with the world. Because when you share these things, you know, even if when you do it auditarily, if that's a word, when you share it and you tell people about this, you're learning again, by the way. Because you have to go through your mind and find out what you did understand and share that. And you'll find the things maybe you, you understood really good and they'll get better. Things maybe you didn't and you'll discuss it. Or you might get like that integrated field of learning where someone goes, yeah, but what about this? And you go, wow, I never saw it that way. That helps. Or it goes, no, that doesn't quite work because of, oh, I now I understand it even better now. So share it every way, but do share it online as well first, please. I Well, that would make me sing. And what will make me sing is this in a minute. So have more fun than you can stand. And I'll speak to you next, well, next week, next time with another deep dive going somewhere. Not sure where yet. If you have any thoughts on that, flick it on an email to me. Okay. Until next time, have a listen to this while we go. Bye-bye now. If you're suffering from things like anger, excessive anger in your life, too much sadness, sadness that keeps recurring and recurring, fear, fear of anything, or just grieving too much about loss. Maybe you're jealous, or maybe your self-confidence isn't, well, it's never high enough, or like your self-esteem, that's never high enough, and it should be, and you shouldn't have to suffer through anger, sadness, fear, grief, jealousy. Do you know what? I hadn't thought about this for a little while, but why don't you come and work with me? Because, you know, I've told you before that I work online, I do coaching, I do therapy online, but I've never really thought about offering it directly to you. So why not? Don't listen to what other people say when they say, you know, things take such a long time, because they don't. Two, three sessions is generally all that's needed to get rid of the some of the biggest problems in, in, in people's lives. I see it day in, day out with my clients. So if that's something you can consider, because I do know, I do know this, that we always put things off. We put things off and then we'll go to that bit where we go, oh, if only I did. So here's the thing. Imagine that putting off has gone by and you've decided to send me an email. An email at feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com saying, hi Paul, I've got this issue. I'd like to work with you. And here's my telephone number. Here's my email address. And the thing is, what would happen is, we get in contact over, over the internet, online. We do an initial consultation. It doesn't take very long to make sure that we're a good fit and make sure you're really comfortable with me. I know you've listened to me a lot, but you really want to see the whites of my eyes. And let me explain how we work together. And if that is right, and it's right for you, and I want to make sure it's right for you. I don't work with just anybody and everybody, only the people who I feel I can really help. Then we'll organise two or three sessions and get the thing sorted. Okay? So why not send me that email now? Don't think any longer. Stop. Get online. Give me an email. And let's do some work together. If you really are interested in making deep changes, I really always suggest one-to-one. Yes, this Personal Development Unplugged podcast gives you all the tools, but let's get rid of the, the deep underlying issues so you can really make use of all the tools here. Anyway, that's enough from me. If you want it and you want to let go of that stuff really quickly and you like me and you'd like to work with me, then send me that email. If it's not for you, that's fine. Just keep listening and keep sharing. Okay. Anyway, I'll hear from you real soon, I'm sure. See you now. Before you go, my friend, 
I'd like to ask you a question. Did you learn something from this? This episode? I hope you did, because even though every episode may not be the one that really floats your boat, sets you, you know, alight, hopefully there's a takeaway in each and every episode for you. And I'd love to know what it was. So please do email me at feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. It's a personal email to me. I'd love to know so we can carry on doing this work that will allow you to exceed your dreams. And what's the payment for this? Payment, Cluffy? What are you talking about payment? I thought it was free. Well, it's like, pay it forward. And if you could pay this forward in two ways, or maybe three. First way is, please share it. Share this podcast with as many people as you could. And you can. It's very easy. Just press that share button. Send it off by email to them. You'd love to... This is something you might like... Mighty... mighty I'll get that right, Paul. Something you might enjoy. And hey, if you could, a real big pay it forward to me is, wherever you're getting this podcast, is it iTunes, CastBox, or... Stitcher or whichever you're getting it from Google Play, I don't know would you please just leave a review because the review really helps people find this this podcast there's thousands out there and we want to or I want to direct people to this podcast and the way to do it is by reviews so if you could do that if you could share, you could do that and also just make sure that you're subscribed so you get this episode and every other episode on a Wednesday and a Saturday. If you do all of that, my little heart will sing. And if you want me to sing, well, you'll have to wait and see. (laughs) Enjoy. But please do, do all of that. Make my heart sing. Bye-bye now. Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.